Welcome back. Sometimes we might need someone to brainstorm with, or we might need a few helpful tips for navigating difficult times. Well, for the last six years, the Women of Denver has connected thousands of women and held hundreds of events. Crystal Covington, founder of Women of Denver, joined me over Zoom. Crystal, welcome. We're so glad to have you with us. Why don't you give us an overview of really what your organization is like and what Women of Denver is all about? So like you said, we've been around for a really long time and we have evolved over that time. And most of our focus has been for all this time on education, really helping women to build the skills they need to be better advocates for themselves, to be able to have the skills to continue to progress, whether they're in the work world or running their own enterprise um, and helping them overall to improve their economic standing, help them to make more money and giving them whatever skills, tools, resources and connections they need to do that. So how are the women you talk with at Women of Denver really navigating business right now? It's there's so many pieces to what they're dealing with. And we have women on both sides um, of 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 the playing field, people who are running businesses, women that own them and women who are working in larger businesses. And on either side, what they're dealing with is a lot of leadership challenges. It's how do I lead in a company where I don't really have the answers right now. And from day to day, the situation might completely change. And so the biggest thing that they've been working with is trying to have opportunities to talk through this. The thing that's been most valuable for them is, is, is having those people to bounce ideas off of and to figure out, well, what are you doing? What are you doing? On the corporate side, some of them are really focused right now on the diversity initiatives and being put in charge of it because um, sometimes it happens where they say, okay, well, you're a minority, you should be responsible for this. So some women are out there saying, well, now I need to figure out how to lead the charge on, on transitioning a company that just put me responsible for this. So I've had a lot of women bring that up, as well as women just trying to figure out how do I show up as a leader when I'm trying to figure these things out and have to make really risky decisions every day. You know, the pandemic has really hit women hard, especially women of color. Can you talk a little bit about that for us? Yes. So there's there's so many pieces to this. One piece is one that I experience on my own situation of being a woman with children and you lost your normal childcare routines. You lost the things that you rely on. There are people who their children are no longer in school. Um, they were taken from school, they lost their child care, um, typical child care support systems. And so they're trying to figure out how to navigate this. They have you know, limited income. They, in some cases, women are leaving the workforce because they have to take care of their kids. Women that are entrepreneurs are struggling to manage their businesses. And when you talk about the differences, especially with women of color, we have lower income. So it's like we're dealing with all of this on a lower income bracket, we're dealing with this especially in Colorado, we're such a transient community. We don't necessarily have our closed family systems. There are things that people rely on that our school systems provide, that our education systems provide, and those things are shut down. And we don't know what it's gonna look like when it comes back in the fall. So some people are mm -hmm. sitting at home saying, well, when school comes back, everything will find. When school comes back, we can <laughs> afford, you know, they'll have lunch at school. When school comes back, we won't have to spend money on a babysitter or I can go back to work, but it may not happen that way. Exactly. So, yeah. So there's a lot of things going on that we have to find solutions for. You hit home on so many levels right there. Now your organization previously hosted live events. Now what have you done to really pivot your programming since the pandemic? So since the pandemic, because of the fact that we can't hold in-person events safely, um, we pivoted to online. And what really was successful with that is the fact that people need that strategy and resource support. So in the with the things that I just talked about, the thing that helps the most is having that network to be able to say, okay, I need this, you need that, let's come together and bring those things together. So things like strategy sessions, um, business development, having women have that place where they can come together and share what they need and have people help them to get those things taken care of. And then also just having people to brainstorm with. So we had to pivot to be able to give people what they need. And that's really an open community and strategy and a trusted network of people at their level. We also have a free Facebook group where people can go and we've been having um, 
conversations there and helping people to navigate uh, making connections in that group as well. Crystal, thank you so much. Visit thewomenofdenver.com to learn more about becoming a member in this inspiring organization and the women behind it. That's going to do it for us today. Thanks for being with us here on Mile High Living. We'll see you again tomorrow at 1130 a.m. Furniture provided by Colorado Casual Furniture.